Alright guys, it's Storm. Uh, today we're going to be doing experiment 20. Alright, uh, experiment 20A, B, and C. Um, so, this experiment is a nucleophilic substitution reaction lab. In this experiment, you will compare the relative nucleophilicities of chloride ions, bromide ions, towards the following alcohols. 1 butanol, 2 butanol, and 2 methyl, 2 propanol. The two nucleophiles will be present at each time in each reaction in equivalent molecular concentrations, and they will be competing for Strub substrate. The protonic solvent is used in this reaction. So that's what we have sitting right here. This is my ammonium chloride, ammonium bromide, sulfuric acid, and water mixture. Uh, it's referred to as nucleophilic solvent in the lab. Uh, I just spent the last hour and a half mixing it, and that's the noise here in the background. We're trying to make sure it doesn't, it stays where it's supposed to be. So yeah, it's pro, um, protic, which means that it has a lot of protons uh, dissolved in there along with our substrate. In general, alcohol does not readily react in a simple nucleophilic displacement react, uh, reactions. If they are attacked by a nucleophile directly, hydroxide ions, a strong base must be displaced. Uh, such a displacement is not energetically favorable and cannot occur at a reasonable extent. To avoid this problem, you must carry out the nucleophilic displacement reaction of alcohols in an acidic or protic medium. Uh, in a rapid initial step, the alcohol is pro protonated here. Then water, a stable molecule, is displaced. This displacement is energetically favorable because water is very stable, and the reaction has a high yield. You can see here, you proton, you add a proton to that hydroxide, make gives a stable leaving group so that this uh, nucleophile can then attack. Once alcohol is protonated, it reacts with either SN1 or SN2 mechanism depending on the structure and the, of the alkyl and the alcohol. A brief review of this mechanism is constituted, consulted in the chapters of nucleophilic substitution in the lecture of your textbook. You will analyze the product of the three reactions in this experiment by a variety of techniques to determine that relative amount of alkyl chloride and alkyl bromide formed in each reaction. That is, each the equal equimolar concentration of chloride ions and bromide ions. Oh my goodness, bromide ions reacting with one butanol, two butanol, two methyl, two propanol, also known as turnt butanol. You will determine which ion is the best uh, nucleophile. In addition, you will determine which of the three substrate reactions this difference is important. Which of these three substrates is this difference is important, and whether SN1 or SN2 mechanisms predominate in each case. Now that we've got that mouthful over with, we're going to start with experiment 20A. Alright guys, here is my apparatus. You can see I've set it up like you have in the book. Um, make sure if you're doing this experiment, right now I'm preheating my, uh, preheating, oh man, that's a little too hot, too hot, too hot. Preheating my volumetric flask just because, you know, I want to maintain temperature and that'll also help you uh, get started faster. I'm not sure what they'll have you do with this. They might have you using a cotton uh, filter at the end. They don't give me all that fancy stuff, so I had to make this apparatus. But you do want to be very careful. Make sure to keep your hoods closed. Make sure you wear your gloves and goggles and masks uh, because these halides are no joke, okay? So just stay safe while you're using them. Uh, 20A, we're gonna be using 2-butanol. Of course, here we go. We're gonna be using 2-butanol and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right guys, so I just added the nucleophilic solvent into here. Sorry, I didn't do it. It was kind of a two-handed job. Um, there's my reflux apparatus. What I'm about to do is add 0.75 milliliters of 2-butanol, so that's 15 drops, into there. Add my boiling stone and then add it to my mantle and get it uh, condensing. I mean, refluxing. And uh, I'll get back to y'all when that's done. 
Okay guys, I added my 0.75 milliliters of tubutinol and you can see my boiling stone in there. I've started my apparatus. As you can see, I have my uh, reflux running. Now remember, when if you set this up in lab, you bring the water in at the bottom and then out at the top. If you can see, my water is uh, spilling out of the back into the sink back there. Okay, so it goes in at the bottom, out at the top. Okay, um, also make sure you have your funnel in there uh, because you're gonna have some halides coming off. So you wanna make sure that they end up in there. And you see it creates a vacuum seal. So I'm just gonna heat this until I get it at a gentle boil. More important than that though, I want it a one drop of liquid condensing back down per second. And I'm gonna, when I get that, I start my timer and I do that for an hour. I know, an hour, painful, but hopefully it'll be worth it, okay? Make sure your apparatus is nice and tight, you don't want any halides leaking out, and make sure you're careful, guys. All right, I'll get back to you when I get the braid I want. All right, guys, we're back. I think you can see it's at a gentle bubble. I'm getting about one drop every two seconds, but that can quickly turn. So I'm about to start my uh, timer. This is for experiment 2A. Here's a check-in with experiment 2A. As you can, you can see the drops a little better now. One, two, three, four, five. So we're getting about one drop per second. It's maybe a little slow. Uh, maybe I'll turn the heat up just a little bit. But my biggest fear is making this evaporate too fast, not too slow. Uh, so I already have my, it's going on my timer. You can see I'm getting a pretty consistent draw. Uh, the condensation spot, I don't get a condi uh, condensation ring on my condenser, so I'm fine. I'm just, you know, letting it go for an hour. I have about 15 minutes left on it, so see you guys after that. We're about halfway through the reflux of 20A. This is about 30 minutes in. I want to give you a closer view. It's all foggy, but... All right, you see there's a gentle bubble. You see all those tiny bubbles coming up. It's nice and gentle. I'm trying not to lose any of my uh, product. And you can see those big thumps right in the middle. I'm getting about one per second. I think this side has a better view. So, 30 more minutes, and then I'll, oh my, there we go. 30 more minutes, and then I'll pull it off, uh, do a couple of things before I finish, but it, for the most part, uh, just need to wait the last 30 minutes. All right, guys, it's been going for an hour. You can see the drops are pretty consistent now. They've been consistent over the hour standing here watching it so now I'm just gonna turn my heat off and let it cool for about five to ten minutes I'll get back to you guys when it's done when it's completely at room temperature finish dropping down then I'll pull it off until then there's still fumes coming off that need to be condensated so I'm gonna let it cool all the way down and then uh, I'll get back to you guys. All right guys, so I removed the mantle. It's been about five minutes, I removed the mantle and I added um, some ice cold water, no ice, just water. And I just submerged it, condenser still attached and everything. And I'm just gonna get it to cool down um, some more. Okay guys, it's been about five minutes. Uh, this is what it looks like. You can see a clear separation. Um, between the organic and the aqueous layer. You can see it's really small organic layer. So what I'm about to do is just, oh man, do this one-handed. There we go, I'm gonna drop that. Pour this off. I'm gonna set it in there to keep it safe. I can turn my water off now. Thank 
you. Okay, now what I'm about to do is add one milliliter, 20 drops of pentane into there um, to increase my increase later, layer, layer, and shake it up a little bit. I'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back. And as you can see, our organic versus aqueous layer is a lot more clear. And you can't confuse it with the meniscus anymore. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off all of the aqueous layer and put it into this tiny beaker. See you in a second. All right, guys, I've transferred the mixture into this centrifuge tube. You see those two layers there? I'm going to remove the bottom aqueous one now. All right, guys, here's my, aqu uh, my uh, organic layer. Come on. There it is, and now I'm going to do the little extractions now. So I'm just going to add water, shake, and then move the water. I actually might add a little pentane just to make my organic a little thicker. All right, uh, this is it after I added the water. I'm sorry, I don't know why my camera is so bad today. You see the two layers. Probably added too much water, but I'm just going to pull it out now. So I added a milliliter and a half of sodium bicarbonate saturated solution. You can see it there at the bottom. And I'm just going to shake, pull that out. Alright, so I have done the water extraction. I just did the sodium bicarbonate extraction. And now this is just my organic layer. Ooh, there it is. Now I'm just gonna dry this really quick. I'm in a test tube and then put it in my vial sample and then we'll finally, oh, finally be done with 20A. I did a quick transfer into this test tube, which makes it so much easier to look at. If you look at it, I don't see any aqueous layer in there. So I'll, I'll add some drying agent just to be sure. But I think I got I did a good job of extracting off uh, the aqueous. So I'm just gonna add some anhydrous, sorry, anhydrous sodium sulfate to this test tube just until it stops clumping. So I, I don't even think I'll add. Well, you'll see. I, I'll just add a little bit, make sure it doesn't clump, and then transfer it into my leak proof vial. Here it is. You can see the anhydrous sodium sulfate down at the bottom. As you can see, it moves freely, no signs of clumping. Uh, I think my organic layer is dry. And I'm just going to transfer this into a vial and be done. This is it. The end of experiment 2A. We have our al alkyl halide sitting in here. And I'll have to run this soon. Alright, see you guys next time. Alright guys, this is for experiment 20B. I uh, have a centrifuge tube right here. All I'm going to do is add 6 milliliters of this, of my nucleophilic substitution solvent, and then some terbutanol, 1 milliliter of terbutanol. And I'm just going to shake it. Alright guys, I set the nucleophilic solution, uh, solvent inside of some ice cold tap water. Just waiting for some ammonium halide crystals to form or uh, some solvent just to precipitate out of it and then I'll add my terbutanol. Alright, experiment 2B. Just got this out. Um, I don't know if you can see there's just a little bit of salt down at the bottom so I'm gonna go ahead and add one milliliter of terbutanol. Oh, that's two butanol. Terbutanol. And then I'm gonna shake it. I'll see you guys after I add it. All right, experiment two B. Uh, I added my terbutanol, and I'm just shaking this up, shaking and shaking it. You can see how cloudy it's getting. I think I'm dissolving all of the salts here. Let's see if we can get a close up. Looks pretty clear. Uh, when I look at it very closely, I can see tiny little uh, particles. That's so I'm just gonna shake until it's all dissolved. I'm going to shake it for about five minutes, let my layers separate out, and then, uh, see it's cloudy there. Uh, let them separate out and then take out my aqueous. Alright guys, I got my aqueous layer for experiment 20B. Uh, I'm just going to add it into this test tube with sodium bicarbonate. Uh, wait for the bubbles to stop. 
transfer it into my vials and then be done with 20B. If you can see, you see all those bubbles coming up? So I'm just going to wait for those to stop and then transfer it into my vial. Then I'll be done with 20B.